Here's a review of my 2004 family hauler, the Toyota Sienna XLE. Limited all-wheel drive. Let's get into it. It's a beautiful day out here on the lake, and what better day to review my new car. It's not new by any means, it's 15 years old, but you know what, it still drives like new. It's a Toyota, what do you expect? This thing has 164,000 miles. Where to begin? This has got the 3MZ FE motor. Uh, this is the last motor that they made uh, before they went to the three and a half liter series, uh, which you still see in all of the Toyota products today. So this is a 3.3 liter V6 that has 230 horsepower and over 200 pound, 240 pound feet of torque. So what about what about the front here? So there's a lot of things to take a look at. Uh, the first thing that is very bizarre with this car is right here. This little square on the right hand side. That's for radar cruise control. It works like a champ. Even though it looks super dirty down there, it still drives like a brand new Lexus does when it comes to radar cruise control. These fog lamps don't work at all, and that's kind of something that plagues these year's Siennas. I don't need them. I probably won't go through the hassle of replacing them. If you see right above that little circular dimple, this has parking sensors on it. So you have two in the front, four in the rear uh, for parking. This came out of the factory with HID headlights. Now this car does have a lot of miles on it. You can see a lot of rock chips here on the front of the vehicle, which is perfectly fine. This, I don't know what happened here. They looks like they ran into a fence, to be honest. It looks like a chain link fence that they just ran straight into, but that's okay, you know? That's what, that's what these old cars are about. They show a little bit of character, right? They have scars. The scars show a nice weathered past, um, and to be honest, Besides that, this thing is pretty darn clean. Uh, it's got the 17 inch wheels. This is the all wheel drive model, so it has run flat tires on it. Uh, and the 17 inch wheels are holding up pretty well. The finish is starting to bubble around the interior, but I, I really honestly can't complain. Uh, looking down the body, I have body side moldings right here. Uh, and you guys can probably see that the driver's side looks pretty darn glassy. There's not really any major imperfections here. Uh, and as I step back, as you get a little bit away from this vehicle, it looks darn near perfect unless you can, you know, see the front bumper here and the scuffs there. But other than that, this thing is looking really, really good for the year and the miles. Um, around the back here, you'll see all these parking sensors I was talking about. Uh, we got two in the middle and then two on each edge of the bumper. Uh, and then you can see a whole lot of badging, the Toyota Sienna XLE, which is the top of the line. And then the Limited is even on top of that. And then of course you have the all wheel drive. Uh, this thing has automatic doors. It has automatic rear hatch. Of course there's windshield wiper in the back. I'm sure that's standard. We have roof racks above the vehicle. So overall, I mean, it's not really lacking anything. I think they may have had a navigation package for this year, but how worthless would that be today in today's standards and when we're almost welcoming in uh, the year 2020, a navigation on this uh, 2004 would be utterly useless. What's not not useless is the DVD system in there that my family's now using which is pretty cool uh, but what do you guys think of the body it's held up pretty darn well the previous owner took really good care of it and it really hasn't seen a whole lot uh, of, <laughs> of battle over the years other than some rocks in the front uh, but let's get on the inside of this bad boy on the inside of this 04 Sienna XLE limited all-wheel drive. We're just gonna go over the basics here. Uh, CD player, we get the, the optional JBL sound system. I haven't counted how many speakers there are, and that's fine, it sounds great for my purposes, which is mainly playing Disney uh, DVDs. What did she do? She switched our talents. Exactly, so it's plenty, plenty good enough for my usage. Um, now this is something that's a little quirk. If I turn this on, or just on the door, this light back here turns on. No other light in the car turns on, right? 
Now, if I turn this off, they all turn off. If I turn it on, then they all turn on, right? All the lights in the vehicle, which is a ton. It's like a freaking nightclub in here at nighttime when you turn that on. All also super, super cool with this is this sonar. If I press it, I have sensors in the vehicle that help me park this thing. It's absolutely incredible. I can't believe it's in a 2004 minivan, as well as this radar cruise control, which is completely over the top, super futuristic for 2004. And just now Toyotas are coming standard with it. So it's taken 15 years for Toyota to make that standard on their vehicles. Toyota really hasn't changed their windshield wiper fob over the years, nor have they changed their light fob either. As you can see here, guys, 160. 64,000 miles and this thing is just going to run forever. I can open and close these rear windows. So if I press open here, which I'm gonna pan around, if you look in the very back, how cool is that? It opens the rear windows. Awesome. Of course, mirror controls and then your light leveling system right here. Underneath here is your ability to turn off the back door and the sliding door, the automatic features. And this is your tire pressure monitoring system. Up here, guys, first ever for me is a thermometer here as well as a compass that's next level. I didn't even know this would switch to Celsius, so that's pretty neat right there. Mode. Oh! You guys, I'm learning along the way because I haven't I've spent so little time. We have mile per gallon right here. Instant mile per gallon. This is super cool. This is remaining miles on the tank. Up here is the controls for, and I know it's hard for you guys to see, but this is the controls for uh, the sunroof. So if I press this, look at this. Working like a charm like the day it was made. No big deal, no big deal guys, it's just a sunroof, you know, just, just we'll leave it like that. This opens up the back left door, this opens up the back right door, and this opens up the rear hatch. This light still works, this light still works. Of course we have our vanity mirrors, which both lights are still working. Uh, how, my hair is absolutely ridiculous today guys, I'm sure you've already commented about it in the comments. And then over here, look at this. This is a cabin mirror. This is an option. I don't believe this is standard on the vehicle, but it's too small for me, even in practical usage. You can see the second row back there just fine, but in the third row, you can't really see the kids. So I don't use it. <laughs> I just tuck it away. Now, what else about this sound system? Well, it's actually a six disc sound system. Here are some buttons that don't really do anything. It, this is like a traffic alert, like a radio traffic alert. I don't use these buttons at all. Uh, volume, tuning, presets, very simple, very standard. This is your rear defrost. I don't have mirror defrost in this vehicle. It wasn't that advanced for the time. Your triple climate control right here. And then we also have different levels of heated seats here, which these things work like an absolute charm. Your shifters here, very straightforward. I love where it's at. Oh my gosh, look what happened. The cup holder came out. Holy crap. I can't believe that came out. It just randomly came out on its own. I've been pressing that button for days. And look, the YouTube gods had you guys in mind. They're like, you know, they need to see that cup holder. They need to see what's in there because it's gonna change their lives. Inside here isn't like, I would call like an ashtray or a phone holder. It's actually really big. Let's see if my phone will fit in there. Little did Toyota know that the phones of today, 15 years later, would not fit in there cup holder and it's adjustable will this massive bottle fit in it not quite but it will fit in this big cup holder over here and then we have a coin tray so so much little nooks and crannies in this vehicle and we haven't even got to the back here's another bottle holder cup holder and here's an imperfection this little crack here but it doesn't make any noise so I, it doesn't bother me it's completely cosmetic moving my wife's scarf underneath here we have two different ways to store things so here's the storage will phone fit phone fits just fine no problemo underneath of it is a really big storage container i mean you could fit i could probably fit all my kids dvds in there but guess what guess what they're hiding in here and they're also hiding in this one which i have locked and the car's running so i'm not going to open it for you guys but look at this bird's eye maple now i haven't cleaned the car it's still holding up pretty darn well i love the steering wheel the steering wheel reminds me of a like a 2008 gx 470 it is awesome not quite as 
high quality, but it is really darn close, especially with the wood. And of course, we have the bird's eye maple here on the shifter and then here on, on each side of the radio. Mm, automatic sliding doors. So this is the configuration we leave it in for my family. Put the baby here, put the two older kids back here. It's super easy. I have the sliding door on the key fob I, and the opening trunk is on the key fob as well. So I have this folded down and the reason is I can sit on this like so and then I can buckle in both of my kids from this vantage point. Now if we have another kid, it's gonna make things a little bit more <laughs> difficult, but in the meantime, this little perch here works great for me. Um, so many cup holders here in the back, guys. Uh, we have two over there, plus a little storage compartment down there. We have another storage compartment over here. We have two more cup holders, and check this out. We have a regular household plug-in, so I can plug the kids' iPads. I have an old school composite <laughs> input, so if you had like a portable DVD player, you could plug it in there, no problem, and it'll pop up on the screen. Which, speaking of the screen, check this out. There it is. Look at this screen here. I don't know why it's not on. If I turn the radio off, let, them, let me turn it back on, and then the screen should turn back on. So you can see guys, Disney videos work super well in here. I know it's a little dark for you guys to see the screen, but as I'm looking at it here in the back seat, I can see it pretty well. Not the highest quality, but it's still running as it came out of the factory. Just super exciting, super cool. And I am really excited for my kids. I mean, growing up, I didn't have these luxuries, you know, not even close. Oh, you know, mom. Put, put on Peter Pan for me. No, I didn't have that luxury. Look at these kids. These kids these days, they get iPads plus a movie in the background. Jeez, how spoiled are we? Okay, so what about the second row amenities? Well, no one's sitting in the second rows, but we have a little map pocket over there. Cup holders there. And then if we press this, sorry, if we press this button down here, this pops out. This probably hasn't been cleaned in a million years. It looks like Coca-Cola spilled in there, and it, it's really disgusting. I don't even want to clean it, um, and no one's going to be using this uh, probably in the next five years or so. So we're just going to touch, tuck that away. Ah, what? <gasps> what? What? What is happening? Check this out. I can move this entire console, and look. What is that? Is that a quarter down there? Do you guys see that? Look at this. There's a quarter down there. Guys, I'm getting rich making this video. Okay, so you can remove this middle console. I don't know why you would do that, probably for, for storage purposes. Here you can see the door. Now check this out. Since this is the top of the line, uh, we have rear sunshades for every single passenger window. And look at that. It is absolutely massive. So not only are the rear windows tinted, we have freaking window shades for the passengers all around all the sides. In the back here, it's very strange. Like I said, this is an all-wheel drive model, and in the all-wheel drive models, they only had run-flat tires. So the only way you can have a spare is if you throw it in the trunk. Now, I'm probably gonna get some bungee cords so I can lay it flat against this, against this seat so I can have a little bit more storage. I, I, but even so with it, I can, I can almost stand up in the back of this thing. It's ridiculous. But in the back, so remember how there's a household plug-in for this third row right over there. Well, look, there's a, another one. And then, you, and then you got a 12 volt. And guess what, that light still works. It's just blowing my mind. And then guess what, we also have this subwoofer back here. Super cool, it sounds great. I haven't pushed it to the limits. I don't plan on doing it. And here's one thing that's that's missing back here is this little seatbelt cover. Don't ask me why, but eventually, or somehow it got broke over the years, but the seatbelt still works. It's keeping uh, this seat intact very, very snugly. But I won't be showing you the stow and go capacities, and the reason is, is because this, and this, and this. Now, unlike modern cars, there's no button here to push down the, the hatch, but you just push it down with your hand just a little bit, and then it beeps, and then it takes off on itself, and then it will lower down and automatically close. Wait for it, wait for it. There it is. And we're off in arguably the most practical family vehicle you can buy. And the minivan has been around for a long time. It's seen a lot of revisions and iterations through the years. But these early 2000 uh, Toyota Siennas are hard to beat for the price. Uh, and we're just, we're fast forwarding. It's a this is a 15 year old car 
and everything works on it like it's brand new for the most part, besides this one cup holder thing I have over here that doesn't open. Everything else works in this car. Like my seat is too warm. I have to turn it down because the seat heater's just too hot. But I've had this bad boy for a little over a week now. It's far from perfect, but for what it is, it's perfect for my needs and for my family. The driving characteristics of this vehicle are terrible. It is so slow and I don't want to push it hard. It feels like the ultimate grandpa vehicle. It does have a decent amount of horsepower, like 230 horsepower, decent amount of torque. And this thing is super smooth. I would say, I'd put it up there with Lexus smoothness. It's not quite as quiet as a Lexus, um, but in terms of the smoothness, it is right up there with a Lexus sedan. Um, I would say it's, it's even more smooth than like a more modern uh, Lexus RX because those are a little bit sportier. And, and in the pursuit of sportiness, you give up the smoothness. This thing is on a cloud 24 seven. I, the braking is not great. <laughs> I do need to probably replace the rotors and the brake pads, but as long as you know what it's capable of and not capable of, you're really going to enjoy it. And I have been for the past week and I know it's gonna do well for my family for years to come. Um, going on the on-ramp here, just a little punch it. That's the highest I've ever, <laughs> I've ever taken it on the revs. That was, I got up to 50, 55 and a half thousand RPM and it downshifted super quick, super snappy, which I wasn't expecting because I've never, I've never pushed it that hard. I'm going 65 here on the, uh, the freeway and it is just super smooth. It's not as quiet as I would like it to be, but for a 15 year old van, I can't complain and I am a little bit spoiled as you guys know that I get to drive Lexus vehicles all the time so but in terms of smoothness this is pretty close to up there once you get on the highway it's not quite as smooth as a modern Lexus but around town I would say it's every bit as smooth now this has something that's very strange for the time period this is a 2004 right this has radar cruise control which is the strangest thing it was a brand new technology back in 2004, and we saw it in Lexus vehicles like the LS430, uh, which is a, it was like a 60 plus thousand dollar vehicle. Well, this vehicle was about half the price of a Lexus LS, and it had a radar cruise control. The caveat to this is that it only goes up in five mile an hour uh, increments. So right now I'm gonna set it. When you set it, it'll, go, it'll set to the speed you have it at. So I'm going 64. If I press up and down on the cruise control stock, it'll go 65. If I press up again, now it's at 70, okay? Uh, but the vehicle in front of me isn't going 70, so I am just pacing off the vehicle in front of me, which you guys can see that little Nissan Rogue up there, which is, it's, it works like a charm. I wasn't expecting it to work as well as it does, and it works for all intents and purposes, just like a brand new Toyota or Lexus with dynamic radar cruise control. In terms of fuel economy, I still haven't driven enough to go through a full tank. I'm probably getting around 20 miles per gallon combined. Again, this is an all-wheel drive version. I drive mostly in, in the city. So if you are in the market for one of these, it's gonna do a lot better than an SUV that has the cargo capacity or the versatility of this thing. Well, most SUVs actually don't have the versatility of a van. And the crazy thing is, is I have tons of storage space, even though I have a spare tire in my cargo area, since it doesn't allow for a spare tire with the all wheel drive model. So you have to put it in your cargo area if you want to carry your spare with you. And I don't, I don't have the ability to do the stow and go uh, to fully fold down the back seats. And I still have tons of room. It's incredible how much space we have in this vehicle. And we're coming from a Toyota Matrix or Toyota Avalon, which had a little bit more space. It just wasn't as flexible with, with the Toyota Matrix. We can fold down the seats, uh, but we never fold down the seats in that car because we have kids in it just like this one. So the cargo space in this is phenomenal for what we use it for, despite there being a full size spare tire in there. So it is getting close to winter time. It is the peak of fall season. We just finished up with Halloween. So things are getting pretty cold outside. This handy dandy temperature gauge up here, it says it's 47 degrees out. This thing heats up really quick. It has tri-zone climate control. I can direct all of it from up here in the cargo or the, the cockpit. It's super, super easy, very intuitive uh, to use all of it. And all of the buttons in this car work besides that cup holder button, <laughs> which I did. 
It's a very interesting because I already have two cup holders. That would be for a third cup holder up here. I would like to have it. I don't know if it's even fixable because the thing just, it doesn't, it doesn't catch anything. It's just, I can press it all day, nothing happens. How long do I plan on having this vehicle? Well, as long as I possibly can. I will be doing some sort of maintenance videos with this van. Um, if I have it long enough where I'm gonna be doing the timing belt for the second time, which is gonna be about 50,000 miles from now, uh, I'll do a video on that <laughs> and the struggles because it's not gonna be easy for me because I've never done it before. There are tutorials out there. But this thing has 164,000 miles. The engine, the transmission drive and run like it's a brand new car. I couldn't be happier. And I and I and and a big reason I'm not worried about it because I know the quality of a Toyota Sienna. I've done my research. I drive Toyotas and Lexuses every single day as a part of my job. I know how well they're built. I'm not worried. And I've seen people do 300,000 miles on original transmission, 400,000 miles. After that, transmission usually needs to be changed, but original engine is definitely a thing. On the brakes, I just got on the brakes. Like I said, they're not the greatest and I, they're, I wouldn't be surprised if the rotors are the stock rotors. So we're gonna push it on the trusty dusty park road here. And I pushed a lot of vehicles on this road, mainly Lexus. That pothole in the middle of the turn was loud. The vehicle handled it fine. It didn't feel like I was out of control. It was just loud. And that's a part of these um these tires these run flat tires ah uh, this thing is a barge i don't even there's no part of me that ever wants to push this vehicle to its limits zero part of me and i'm perfectly fine going 35 miles an hour around this it is quick enough for my needs and when i have kids in here i'm going to even be driving more conservative they don't need to be flying about in the back seats yes they're in harnesses but you guys get the idea there's quite a bit of people out here at the lake today that's surprising uh, very surprising. So I'm gonna find a spot to do the old walk around uh, and get some awesome footage for you guys, which you've already seen, my little montage. A couple mallards down there poking at each other. That's cute. The geese, guys, I don't see the geese, and that is perfectly fine with me. But yeah, that sums it up for my 2004 Sienna. I'm super excited about it. It is just what my family needs uh, as the kids are getting bigger. And who knows, there may be more on the way. You never know, you never know. But I'll see you guys in the comments below and in the next video. Until next time, peace out.